Hello everyone and welcome to Tin Talks. This is a platform that is an open source for anyone on our team to come on and talk, to interview someone, whatever they want to do, they can come on and talk with some people about whatever race they just ran, about what they're going through, about something they have coming up. We're going to have some few seasons and I'm so excited that I get to kick things off. Episode 1 with Reed Fisher just coming off the New York City Marathon. He was 10th place. And he now has quite the resume with a ninth place finish in Chicago, a top 20 finish in Boston. He's a 210 marathoner at the age of 27. It is pretty crazy to read all that out now and to think about the kid that I knew when I first met you at the NCAA 10K Championships. I don't know, was that actually the first time we ever officially met? I think the first time we like officially met was Stanford 10K. That's our right. Senior. That's right. Stanford so qualifying for the national championships. Yep. yep. Where we both missed our school record by like five seconds and we're just wallowing in our own self pity. Who was the school record holder? I think it. Jason Lemkiel, I think, had it. Still has it. Nobody's broken it. Really? Yeah. This is no Come ten, on. Like, Fog Dog. Yeah, Fog Dog up is not game. a 10K guy. So. Did he get the other school records? Like, does he have the 15 and 5K record at Drake he now? He doesn't have. I think my outdoor 5K record is the one that's only. That's the only one still standing. Yeah, so, so I have a picture here. I break it. I'm going to show the audience here. I guess in the editing process, we can just show everyone. Oh, yeah. Famous photo here. It's a gem. Side by side, NCAA 10K, two scraggly guys. <laughs> if if you would have told that kid that resume that I just read out, mm -hmm. you would have been like, that's the end of my running career. You know, like yeah. you accomplished everything, right? Yeah, like, probably, yeah. Do you Like, did you ever think that you could have been a top 10 world major finisher let alone a two-time at yeah. this time yeah definitely not i mean like i knew i was going to move up to the marathon and i kind of felt confident that i could like qualify for the trials and like probably get into world majors and be moderately competitive but yeah i don't think i ever really had like aspirations which has always been kind of the fun part of my journey is like i've always been a bit of like a weight bloomer so mm -hmm. it's been fun to just like constantly be like resetting expectations and goals kind of based on where i'm at so yeah it's pretty wild to think about for sure yeah so i ran 18 miles this morning and i'm pretty wrecked um and i did just like four miles of tempo work and it's quite interesting to me when i think about the marathon because we actually did a workout that's on youtube you can go watch it as part of the build up um and i hung tough with you mm -hmm. and it's interesting because there's no chance in hell that i could have done even close to what you did in New York. But I could do that workout with you. Yeah. For like, sure. what do you think the difference is? You know, like, what do you think? Is it the one tens that you did for 10 weeks straight going into? Like, do you think that's the biggest difference between you and me and how you can handle that? Because 18 miles today, I mean, I get to the end of that run and my legs are, just you know, are like completely gone. And mm -hmm. I'm already just like, even tonight, like, I don't, I don't even, I'm not even considering double doubling tonight without yeah. my legs feel. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think it's, there's a bunch of factors, right? Like part of it is just the, the mileage and the strength and just the callousing that you do for your legs. But I think it's also just like, I'm probably a bit more predisposed to the marathon than you are, which is like why you can just obliterate me in a 5k. But. I was thinking about doing your stride. I mean, in that workout, I was trying to, you know, match your stride mm -hmm. rhythm. And like, even today I was like, I need to learn how to not push off so hard so yeah, that I'm in sure. the air for as long as I am compared mm -hmm. to like how you can it's just saves so much energy yeah yeah so it's a bunch of factors but yeah i think also it's just like when you inevitably commit to running a marathon like i think your mindset just shifts and like all of a sudden you just have to have this like macro level top-down view of the build and so like each workout is just like a piece of that puzzle rather than like right now for you i feel like a lot of the track focus guys are more like every workout is an opportunity to get better and get fitter and like hurt a little bit more. Whereas I think for me in the marathon build, every workout is an opportunity to just like run on tired legs and just like get my body and mind more used to that. So I don't look at like, there's only a handful of workouts in the whole build that I'm like, okay, this is a really important day that I want to like take seriously prep for it. Like really make sure I knock it out of the park and everything else is kind of just ticking yeah. boxes and, and yeah. doing enough work on high mileage weeks that, you're callousing yourself for it so, yeah yeah what was the hardest workout on the whole build up like was there a moment where you're like all right that was that was it like i don't think it's gonna get much harder than that um like i mean i know you went up high a few yeah. times which is new for you with coach hunter yep like how did that come about 
Yeah. Um, so we, we kind of just the, with the way up until New York that my marathon career this far had played out, like I've sort of had to like have buildups that have been like relatively safe just to try and get a result. So like obviously Chicago last year, like that was more or less my marathon debut because right. of how the trials went. And so it was like, okay, we want to make sure I get to the starting line healthy and I would rather be 90% trained, but hundred percent healthy than the opposite. Um, and then obviously with Chicago being so hot, like performance was great, but the time was not. So then it was like, okay, well now I still need a mark. So Boston, then I had basically 10 great weeks of training, but it was nothing. We weren't reinventing the wheel. We weren't really taking any risks. It was kind of just a duplication of the Chicago build with the intent being, okay, it won't be 70 degrees and windy in Boston. So I can, go around a better time that's more indicative of where I'm at and then obviously it was a good result like 210.54 I was pleased with um so going into New York it was like okay we've got the time we've got the top 10 or the world major like now we really have a lot less to lose so let's take some more like calculated risks and training so, so what were some we of those risks? yeah so it was doing some workouts up high um so yeah I did a handful of long runs on mags which we're tough. They're brutal. Those are probably some I'm like so the hardest I workouts. It. I feel like yeah, I know. And you have never yep. actually done uh, that. That was your dream, and, and you were just <laughs> over in Europe while I was living it. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that was some big changes. And then we also did. I did a couple days where I did like three minute reps up high. And there's one day where I did them. Did you do them at Niwot Track or sorry, no. Niwot Track? Uh, yeah. Neater than, ne- neater no. Than no. Um, I did them like on the road that runs right in front of them. So it's yep. like the road that runs to Eldora Ski Resort. Right. It's a good, relatively flat stretch of runnable road that's pretty low traffic so that was where we went for one of them and then another one i was actually in uh the winter park area for a wedding and so i just did it up there so both of them were like eighty three hundred feet so yeah. about three thousand feet higher than boulder so it's just a good opportunity to run sub marathon pace and sub marathon effort at eight thousand feet and really just kind of like feel that sensation of like oh i just went over the red line and i yeah. still have like 15 minutes worth of hard running to do yeah. and just how many having, times like, in your build up that. did you feel like you went like put your head underwater you know where you're like okay this yeah. is definitely past like the effort that i should be going today like i know like your secret sauce it seems like that i've always told people is like really just can stay at this level consistently and just nail everything all mm-hmm. the time and that always seems to benefit him and it seems like with this stuff like was there ever times in this where you're like all right this is this is my red line um there were moments like in the long runs at mags especially i mean you know how it is up there like it's just so volatile that like you can go from being like i need to walk up this hill to then like two minutes later being like oh i feel okay again just because you're so close to that red line that like you're running up guardrail and it can just push you over Um, did you experience that at all in new york this past build-up where it's like at queensboro bridge or anything like that where you're like oh man like how am i gonna run another 10 after this yeah i would say the the hardest moment like during the race was probably at about like 16 because that's when you're like leaving first ave into uh, the bronx and so it just like the crowds start to dissipate pretty quickly yeah you start to have that realization that you do have like 10 miles to go so for me it's like almost an hour of racing left and like where i was at at that point there was like i couldn't see anybody up the road i just passed nathan martin yeah you had so no like, idea yeah, i mean i saw yeah. the video after the race where you were talking about like it, it's crazy to look back at it and i saw the video of you talking to coach after the race and you were like yeah i just like didn't have anything to like chase after i was by myself mm-hmm. like i didn't have people to go after you know and like i passed a few people i guess you know yep. and meanwhile like me i was like Tracking updating it. the results yeah. <laughs> and i'm like okay reed's not in the top 10 you know what i mean yeah uh, for americans and all of a sudden it was like there he is and i'm like all right maybe he can get lenny and then bang you're you know right mm-hmm. there at number two yep. like and then that's where i went nuts yep. you know where all of a sudden i was like holy crap he's right behind fobble now mm-hmm. i guess fobble was what like when did fobble break away in the race he took off pretty early um he took and off like and right he, is that like an immediate surge like what is that like in a marathon kind like of. is it just a slow squeeze yeah um so scott both times that i've raced him in a marathon now, so did he boston, say anything before he took off or not just really. like yeah so both in boston <laughs> and new york it was like a pretty relatively abrupt move that came after like a good long stretch of people like working together so okay. now that i feel like i have seen that from a couple times i'll definitely be more i'll anticipate it more and be more reactive to it in the future be ready for um, that in orlando yeah exactly <laughs> um so no i think he took off right around 20k so just before half marathon um and so it was like right after right before maybe we got to our next bottle either way uh, right around a bottle station so he 
basically grabbed his bottle. And a lot of times there's like a little bit of a well when you're picking up your fuel just because you're Is there an you're etiquette there in the race, like in a marathon, yeah, where like usually. you're grabbing, you're like, you don't surge on someone when they're grabbing um, bottles? I mean, or... there's not like a ton of etiquette. With There's more like a etiquette Unspoken. in terms of like, I'm on table two, Jared Ward's on table six, let's call it. So he's going to let me go to the front of my pa- our right. pack so I can get my bottle. And then yeah. I'll veer off to the left-hand side of the road so I'm just out of the way. Yeah. So you're not, like, running into each other or having to, like, last minute be like, oh, dude, I need my bottle. Like, I got to get through. Yeah. Um, have you ever shared a bottle with someone? Like, have you I ever did missed a York. bottle? Yeah. Oh, you did. Yeah, you my, missed a bottle. Yeah, my 15K bottle just wasn't on the table. Yeah. Still didn't know what happened to it. And who hooked it, it up? By the time I was just gone, it was it was just not there. Um, Jared and Abdi both had. Both of them. Yeah. So they, like. Homies. We came through and I was Shout like, out. yo, I don't, my bottle's not here. Um, and Abdi was so like, you asked them. No, well, I was like, I don't, I don't have a bottle. Dude, and I would Abdi panic. Just, oh, I was, I would yeah, panic. I was definitely a little bit freaked Especially out. in that weather and like mm-hmm. how much like you were losing during yep. that. Yeah. So I was like already being like, okay, well I'll get, you know, they have like, it was gels. probably Galen just hit it aside. <laughs> <laughs> um, they have like, they have gels on the course and like they had Gatorade endurance. So I was already kind of like, okay, you're okay. Like, don't freak out about it. You're going to be able to get fuel and hydration. Um, but then, yeah, like I would like out loud, I was like, ah, oh, where's my bottle? And yeah. so like Abdi and Jared both heard that. And Abdi was like, Hey, I have Morton. Do you want some? And yeah. so I, he, I would like let him have his fill, obviously whatever he needed to take. And then he had some leftovers. So I took some of his and then Jared had like caffeinated morton that he okay. had some left over to he was like hey you can have some of this too so between their two bottles i probably got close to the normal amount of calories and right. fluid that my bottle would have yeah. been um but it's always nerve-wracking right like i didn't yeah i don't totally. use morton myself so like you're practicing and training like For it's sure. a totally different yeah. product so i was that was also like you know i'm not gonna be like oh had that not happened i definitely would have yeah Fable's right right move. exactly but like, yeah <laughs> when fable took off that was like maybe a mile or two after that i just, missed my bottle that was like and a calculator i was like risk yeah for sure and it was like okay like i don't know how that fuel is gonna sit if i push while i'm digesting a different kind of fuel like does that just put me at a stupid risk to totally. have like gi distress and then have a really rough like second yeah, half of totally. the race i mean so. i mean we saw Dan- our, our boy daniel out there mm-hmm. jumped in the porta potty yep. i guess you didn't see any of it um, <laughs> uh, i saw him on the ground when did I passed. You? yeah he's still you? getting medical attention Dang. by the time i went by um, that was crazy yeah, yeah that yeah. that that was a. Uh, that was an Icarus moment for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. So what is it like, is there other banter? Like, do you talk to these guys during the race? Like, is there anything that ever yeah, happens? Yeah, there's a you little know, bit. Did anything happen in New York with another runner or? Um, you, nothing. You I were mean, tell me earlier about the crowd and with yep. Jared. But... Yeah. So, yeah, it's like, especially in like the first half, because a lot of times like the marathon's different. Like for you in a 5K, like the second the gun goes off, you're trying to beat everybody, right? In the mm. marathon, there's like a bit of a, cooperative to. element to it yeah because yeah, nobody wants to run 26 miles completely on an island so it's oftentimes you're sharing the lead you're sharing bottles sometimes if somebody misses one like you're letting each other kind of like feed off one another's energy um and so i think yeah it's it's you always have like a little bit of banter in the pack and, and just conversation so like we went out through five miles we were 24 52 so we were averaging 458 pace through five miles and Reed like, Fisher miles, point. sub five yeah. miles. Yeah. <laughs> um, and at that point, Scott was running next to me and he was like, yo, what are we, what are we running right now? And I was like, well, we've been averaging basically. It's like, look at your, look at your Coros, um, you got a Coros watch, dude, you might know. <laughs> yep. Um, he's like, he literally then just like looked at the group and was like, guys, like 213 is going to be a great day today. And we're running yeah. 210 pace right now. Like this isn't sustainable. We got to kind of chill out. Dang. And I was like, That's a baller veteran yeah, move yeah, right there. Sure. To like be like, yo, I I'm know what's best. On this. All you yeah. guys need to chill out. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was, I mean, that was like, so everybody except for Marty and Nathan Martin did yeah. then like, we were all like, okay, yeah, that's very prudent. Like, yeah, this isn't sustainable. So you guys all put so your hands together. Country. Yeah, and... exactly. We all spat on our hands and yeah, shook on it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was when we, you, if you go back and look at the tracking, like okay. it, there's a pretty marked moment, like right around 10K where it goes from like 458, 458, 458 to like 505 to 506 pace. And that was basically that moment. Um, and yeah, Marty and, and Nathan went up the road and just kept their rhythm that they had been running and tracked they it both, down. Yeah, they both, they both paid the price back. for it a little bit. So I do think it's... So they didn't respect the fobs and they nah, paid for it. Yep, yep. Sorry, Marty. So what's going to happen like in Orlando, <laughs> you know, trials and, and fobs is going to be like, like, at what point 
him say something like we should slow down is that just totally out the way yeah i mean I don't think like that's that obviously happen. early enough right like yeah but i don't, i can't would imagine. it happen in olympic trials I don't you think, think? So. like that's, olympic trials the trials is a little bit yeah it's the outlier like yeah. in, in all the majors and you know race like cim or grandma's there is that more of like a let's work together until it's time to race like hey we all atmosphere. just want to run fast today yeah. get our payday yeah. for the next major exactly yeah. um but yeah when when you're at the trials like that i would say is more like what you guys experience where it's like when that gun goes off like yeah you don't care about the guy yeah, next you to you you're trying some, to be top yeah. three um and that's part of the reason say i say good luck at the beginning the, yep. respect them for that yep. they're about to do but when the gun goes off all, all bets, are, bets off. are off yep. yeah and that's a part of the reason i think at the 2020 trials like why i fell a couple times sure. is just because ever it's like a regional track 10k totally. in the incident like everybody's fighting yeah to be at the front to be in control and just like there's going to be casualties when that's totally. involved and that was I a always, huge learning lesson for me i always thought like the most aggressive racing is either like the dmr indoors and civil a's mm-hmm. like those early 1200 meter legs yeah. like you got to yeah. have a guy that is just willing to you know what i mean like presence. either take yeah. some guys <laughs> out and hold their own because staying up is yeah. part part of the race you know yeah, what i mean like sure. staying on your feet like you're gonna get clipped like you are the one putting yourself in position in a race you mm-hmm. know so yeah it's crazy to look back at that olympic trials experience you had and you falling twice in that race and now all of a sudden it's like pretty crazy and max said it the other day where he was like man i didn't realize how much reed might be a potential favorite even with how consistent you're now running going mm-hmm. into the next trials that just got announced in orlando i mean we saw like the ranking system and as you already said you know there's definitely like a marathon bias. recency yeah. bias there mm-hmm. but i mean you see like these heavy hitters you know that with connor Mance just coming off his two what what what, what was his time like 20 yeah 208 yeah 208 i mean mm-hmm. incredible yeah um you have the perennial galen rupp you know um that you can never count them out, you know? Mm-hmm. And then what were you? I think you were fifth on the list or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you had guys like Elkana behind you. I mean, some huge names. Um, what does that feel like all of a sudden? To yeah. Have you in the question, you know, I mean, it's so far out, mm-hmm. but is that the big, big goal here? Or is there something else in this sport that you're like, no, 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 this is actually where my heart is. Or is yeah. it really putting on that U.S. singlet, making that marathon team. Mm-hmm. Is that the next big chapter that you want to add to your resume? Yeah, I mean, that's like, that's what keeps all of us awake sure. at night, you know, is, is dreaming about being an Olympian. So, yeah, I think, you know, the exciting thing for me in the position I'm at is, like, the marathon favors consistency. You know, like, it's the classic Des quote of, like, keep showing up, you know, and that's, yeah. I would say, pretty much my MO as well is just, like, if I can out-consistency people, it's hard to outperform somebody who's just always going to show up and get the job done. And that's what I'm trying to just like embody with my career. So I do think, you know, in a race like Orlando, there are the guys who've ran, you know, multiple marathons, a couple trials, like they have that experience, but that makes them a little bit more of like a known entity. Whereas mm-hmm. for me, like I'm young and I'm still learning so much every marathon that I run that I think it's going to be in 15 months from now. Like I hope that, I'll have improved more than some of those other names because I am on like a different side of my running career than a lot of mm-hmm. those guys. You know, sure. they're more in like the. I mean, you have peak realistically you have two shots at this. Yeah, you know what I mean. Sure. Like you're young enough. I mean, there's not like I said at the beginning of this podcast. There's not that many 27 year old marathoners that have the type of now almost vet. I mean, I mean, what do you think is a veteran status in a marathon? Like how many marathons do you feel like you need to run to be like, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm getting there for sure. Like I would think after maybe one or two more, I would like to be like, okay, you know, I, you're I, a vet. Like all of a sudden there's going to be guys. And if Reed Fisher says, all right, guys, we're yeah, going too fast. They're right. going to be like, Oh yeah, I'm going to listen to that. I mean, yeah. I'm sure there's going to be people going into Orlando that kind of have that same Jared Ward, Scott Fobble, like, okay, mm-hmm. if I go with these guys, I know they're going to be calculated and run this yep. the right way, mm-hmm. you know? Yep. Yeah, that'll be really interesting. Yeah, definitely. So it's, it'll be, trials are always, like, the most fun race to watch, you know? Yeah, so totally. No put, pacers. Like, yep. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you never so know. I mean, be... like, who would have thought Jacob Riley and Abdi, you know right. what I mean, mm-hmm. would have filled out those, like, Last couple second, third spot, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, it's truly, all bets are off. Yep. You know, yeah. and for the trials, it's just that much more elevated. So that is going to be so something so exciting um, for all of us. I mean, we've all I feel like it's something that's been so exciting for us that we are still a track team. But I feel like Tim Manley is in this process now where we're seeing more and more guys start moving to the roads. You know, Connor wants to run a half. Mm-hmm. Brian Braz is going to debut in a half marathon. Goose has run half before, but he's actually racing the Boston Marathon half on Sunday. 
Um, and I think a lot of that comes from this confidence that you bring to the team is showing guys, hey, look, we can make this transition to the roads and find a lot of success. And there's a huge market there, you mm-hmm. know, where all of a sudden it's really hard to keep track of all of a sudden the sound running 5K and Jakob decides to show up last minute. And then all yep. of a sudden overnight, it's this huge race. Mm-hmm. It's a really hard thing to follow in the sport. Yeah. But it's so great when you put something on the calendar and we can market it and show and people can get behind you in these marathons, just like the team has where it's like, Hey, this is Reed's fall build. And I think guys are, I think it's infectious for this team. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting how this team isn't, you know, the same team where in the photo, when we showed up here, um, in 2017, you know, and you're working, you know, full, yeah, full time in Golden, yeah. Colorado, and we have to work out at 6:45 in the morning mm-hmm. so that you and Tyler could get to work in time. And I basically had a six month, you know, runway of income yep. to like make it possible for myself. So, mm-hmm. who do you think on Tim Man Elite has the most potential in the marathon in the years mm-hmm. to come? Like, if you're like, okay, this guy, I think if he were to go all in on it, who do you think? I think all you guys are going to be great. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to give you an answer. I'm going to give you an answer, but, like, I really think that, like... See, this is why Reed's a backbone of the team, you know? He can always sugarcoat things. He can, he's, he's political yeah, about it. Yeah. If there's any sponsors out here, this is why you need to sponsor Reed Fisher. He's always going to say the right thing at the right time. Um, with that said, I think... I think Connor's going to be a great marathoner someday. Mm-hmm. Like, he's just got that strength from his CU days. Like, he's... His temperament's pretty similar to mine, which mm. I think is always like a good thing. He's got the marathon. stride. He's got the little shuffle. Yep, he's, yep, yeah, he's got the marathon sure. shuffle. Yeah. I don't think he's a super. He's already passed like four kidney stones now, yep. so like he's, he's, been he's got the old man a card. Of like hurts, the marathon, you know, there's needs. nothing that he's probably gonna feel in a marathon that is worse than passing kidney stones now. So. Yeah, yeah. So I think Connor, and then I think if he chooses to do it and if mm. his, his body can handle the high mileage because he's a pretty low mileage guy right now, like I think Aaron will be yeah. a great marathon. I was actually someday. running with Aaron today on the long run and I was mm-hmm. like, dude, like does what, because I know for me, I watch you run the marathon and I'm like, I want to fucking do that so bad. Yeah. Like it's like that fires me up, you mm-hmm. know, like the photo of you, you know, <laughs> going on first Avenue, getting the crowd going, you know, like that is just right into my fucking veins like that is something that i want to do i think it's crazy how there's people in this sport that are just like nope i'm a miler Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah come on we're runners like Mm -hmm. we're athletes and we should experience everything and i'm stoked to hear that um you are interested to go back to the track a little bit also Mm -hmm. um for the 10k this spring but it was so great because aaron did you know like kind of you've also planted that scene in his head too where it's like damn like that is something i might want to do you know Mm -hmm. because i truly think like You know, people talk about, you know, what's like the purest distances in this sport, whether it's like 800 mile, you know, 5K. Um, At the end of the day, if you were to go around New York City and interview people or anywhere in the world and say, hey, like, what is the like, what's the hardest running race? Like what if you like, what is a running distance that, you know, like they're going to say the marathon. And that in my head is like, okay, that is a universal truth that if you can run a marathon at any level, um, you've accomplished something. Mm-hmm. And that's what's so intriguing to me to want to run one myself. But yeah, I completely agree with you. I think Bonnie um, definitely has a huge potential there. Um, is that 30 minutes? Uh, I already clicked it. We were good. Oh, you did? Okay. Um, I would, yeah, you talked about the 10K. I want to hear more about um, what you want to be doing next year and why going back to the track and doing some other things just helps you sort of keep a fresh like view on running for yourself so that you're not doing that typical spring fall marathon especially the year before the trials mm-hmm. so just go in that yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so like going going off of that like that 10k coming up like so are you thinking about doing like sound running 10k or is that too soon like you think your legs will be ready for that like what's like, yeah. what are some of the media goals now coming yeah. off new york um so yeah like i might get on the track like more probably like early summer late spring like june time frame maybe like portland track festival 10k sure. or something like that do you um, feel like you have unfinished business on the track a little bit i mean i've i've talked about it like with you guys and it's yeah. like my prs are 1343 and 2812 so right. they're both kind of like yeah, you miss you miss you milestone. miss the super spike yeah. era where all of a mm-hmm. sudden you know it's like thirteen forties and all of a sudden it's thirteen twenties and now it's you know yeah yeah so I don't you know I would love to just like break twenty eight would be fun um, and especially like yeah that's totally the way you guys have have poured into my marathon builds like it's always fun for me on the the other side of the coin to like 
watch you guys get so invested in your track season and that's something that like always does pull me in a little bit like it's kind of more the the roots of this team is is the origins is like cross country and track right mm-hmm. so it's always something that's in the back of my mind but you know I'm, i haven't put on spikes in in over 18 yeah, months at this point <laughs> so i need to like be smart about it and make sure yeah. that, that like my body is holding up and that right. that should be a priority for me rather than just like yeah. something i'm excited about but yeah i i this spring, I mean, we'll see. Like nothing set in stone. I may end up running a marathon just mm. if it becomes a good decision for me to do that. Um, whether I feel like I need the experience or it's just like another great opportunity from a goals and and placing high standpoint. Um, but yeah, I would like to not run a marathon this spring if yeah. <laughs> if everything goes according to plan. Come on, you don't um, want to double back for Boston. Yeah, like, I mean, I we'll feel see. Like that's yep. the whole new cool thing for yeah, everyone to just, announce. They're doing like two of the majors right, a couple now. of a year. Um, but yeah, I think. And inevitably drop out, it seems like, in the process. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I, you know, I ran Chicago last year and then Boston this spring and then New York this fall. So that's more or less been marathon building for like a year and a half at this point. And yeah. I'm kind of just like, my half marathon PR will be three years out of date, which seems crazy as yeah, of this wow. January. Yeah. So like, I'm watching all these guys run 61 flat or faster and it's yeah. just like, oh, I know I can do that. I just yeah. haven't prioritized it like they mm-hmm. have. Um, so yeah, I would, I would like to make that a priority this spring and just have some fun doing some like off distance, you know, 10 milers, things like that, For that sure. are only going to make me, I think a better marathoner, you know, as, as much as you can push down that half marathon, totally, PB, totally. like it just makes I, going I totally out 63 you. flat, yeah. like that much more attainable. So yeah, I think that's, I want to run Houston. Like, I think that's a, a big goal of mine is get my body sub back. Sub 60, what are we thinking here? For sure, sub 61. Like, I yeah. think that's the next logical goal. Like, my yeah. PR is 6137. How many, how many Americans have ever gone? under 61 uh, like is there like is there is there is it more than 10 it's right around 10 i think okay. um so bia ran 61 30 or 60 37 okay 60 37 i think or 36 in valencia, valencia this year yeah. and that put him fifth or sixth all time yeah but then there's like kind of a drop back to like frank and a couple other guys yep. who basically ran like 61 flat yeah. um so i think that's you know, I'd love to be a, a 60, 59 guy in Houston. Totally. That's, and that's, that's like a badass. you know, like where big guys, where guys like maybe in my realm are like, if you're a 13 O guy, you know, like mm-hmm. you're, you're a heavy hitter as the coffee club boys would say it. Yeah. <laughs> so like, that's like, I feel like that's the same thing in my head where I'm like, if you're a 60 something half marathon or like mm-hmm. you are a heavy, heavy hitter, yep, you know, sure. like that is, that is some dangerous territory mm-hmm. right there. Yeah. And I would say like at this point in my career, like I feel like the half still my favorite distance. Yeah. Like I like the amount. marathon and it's a lot of fun. I know I like enjoy and appreciate the build up process. Whereas sure. the half is not quite as like, you know, get as emotionally invested in it. But I do think like, I'm Dude, still young so enough and, and fast enough that like the half's to, fun. Yeah, that's it's so crazy to think about like the emotions that go into a marathon and leading into one, and then you're on the starting line. It's like if I fuck this up, I'm not <laughs> doing another one for. I mean, how long? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, wow. Like for it's sure. like for me, it's like oh, you, like I didn't run a good 1500 or 5k. It's like look, realistically, I can go the next weekend and hit mm-hmm. another one. Like maybe it doesn't have the same world ranking status, you know, yeah. per se. But I mean man like that is a whole nother ball game and once again going back to that like that challenge mm-hmm. of staying level-headed and f- approaching that head-on i mean i'm sure now that ha- you have all this experience with new york chicago boston now um you've learned so much from each one of these marathons um give me like a little breakdown you know or like a ranking if you will of like new york boston chicago you know like what was like where was the spectators the best what what was like the best athlete experience you had and like the race itself like where do you rank those like for someone watching and listening right now that is thinking about doing a major marathon um let's let's hear about it rank them let's yeah. i know I, I know you got to save face here and be <laughs> nice so they give you your appearance fees and years to come but let's dish it out yeah um i do i mean i do saving face aside like i do think <laughs> each of them offers such an like unique experience that like i would really like tell all everyone. three were completely oh, yeah. different you said yeah i mean chicago is where you go to run fast right like you sure. can't you're much less likely to run fast in boston yeah and new york as you are in chicago so was it like, a big difference chicago to new york like the spectators mm-hmm. yeah i mean new york's way more crowded for sure just the city's way bigger right. like it's a huge marquee weekend for the entire town uh, city not town but yeah uh, whereas chicago it's like there's moments where it's just as loud as New York, but I would say, like, on the whole, New York's crowd support is a little bit better. It's, you know, people just walk out their front mm. doors and will scream their faces off for you in New York, where Chicago's 
more people who are there to spectate the event. So it's like in Chicago, maybe it's a bit more like running fans. And so you might be a little bit more like recognized, like people be like, oh, there goes the American pack. I know right. every guy in there. Whereas in New York, it's, just, have a, no it's, just, idea a, yeah, it's just a dude from yeah. the Bronx who was walking to his local right. bodega and was like, totally. holy shit, these guys are hauling. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. I mean, the new so. gen guys made the interview video where they were going around asking mm-hmm. people like, do you know Helen O'Beary? You know what I mean? People are like, nope. They have no clue. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I but think you that's... got a lot of love in New York. Yeah, me? definitely. Um, so yeah, I think it's Chicago's where you go to run fast. It's kind of like the maybe the the runner's marathon because you, you really have to know who's racing there if you're going to be plugged in and you're going to go um boston it's got the heritage like it's a it's a holiday for the whole city everyone's out there it's been there forever and so just like the respect that that event commands and the, and the history of it like when you go there you definitely feel like there's just some like magic in the air sure um and then york's just like a, a massive party so yeah each one really? does feel like a completely unique experience so if you're going to run one run them all you know yeah. i don't think you can run one and just be like oh okay that's a pretty good indicator yeah. of what boston or chicago or new york would look like depending on which of one those race. three right now you got to put it down which one are you like i need to go back mm-hmm. and hit it right now i'd say probably chicago yeah because i just like you know that's where it's you just run a shit fast and, I and that's the thing i was there, thinking so. about was like chicago mm-hmm. is hot Mm-hmm. New York is hot. Yeah. This is just setting you up for Orlando. Orlando. That's the, that's like, hope, this yeah. is all part of the master plan here <laughs> is yeah. that you picked these for the bad weather. Like, you're not running off to CIM or doing these other races. Well, they were both you supposed to have good weather. I just got project unlucky. And get, your, get your shiny time, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, it's setting I, up I think for the bigger right. stuff. Yeah, I think you're I mean, it, obviously, it's been partly just, like, bad luck that the two have been such poor weather. But I have, mm-hmm. like, made an effort to seek out the races that are, like, where you go to compete, you know, Chicago, ideally you are kind of going to like time trial and there's pacers yeah. and all that. Um, yeah. But New York and Boston are just like where you go to just see what you're made of. Totally. Um, totally, and, yeah. and so I think that will serve me well in, in Orlando. And then, yeah, with the weather being what it's been yeah. in both those, like if the weather's not good in Orlando, it's going to be hot and humid, which I've now ran two successful marathons in. So I feel yeah. confident from that standpoint where totally. going into the race, it's like, totally. okay, you know, I've, I mean, to I've know your body before. can handle that. Mm-hmm. Like it's going to yeah, be a huge. scary thing, you know, for people that, did not have the experience they wanted you know and then to go into it again you know yep. like i know there's definitely in any sport in any facet you know like it's just like the, if you fall once you might fall again yeah you know sure. type of thing mm-hmm. um all righty um connor rang my bell today like we already <laughs> mentioned he yeah. put it to me on my long run today i'm sure there's been plenty of times in your races especially in your young career and maybe even in new york um is there a moment where you're like, wow, that guy, fill in the blank for me, who has really rung your bell in a race, and you're like, dang. Like, you had to tap out, and he just ran away from you. Yeah. Man, I don't know. That's a good question. Like, um, was there a moment that you remember, you know, where there was like, this guy just put you down in your place? I'm try- I mean, I like Lopez in like 20... 20- 18 you know, first, yeah like there was that one season on the track where i was just lopez's yeah. pacer yeah. for like every race i showed up to That's lopez right. was just like ah here's this tiny scrawny kid yeah, he's just yeah. gonna pace me for 20 laps That's and then right. i'll kick his ass um so probably that i don't you yeah. know i would say on the roads like i feel like i hold my own pretty well i mean there's obviously races where like i just don't have the results i want but sure. it's usually not like a mono e mono kind of thing where somebody's yeah. just like you're done now. You're mine. You know. <laughs> yeah, I mean Lopez running like a 54 second last right. 400 in a 10k yeah, feels yeah, a little yeah. different than yeah, than somebody like that. That is definitely you at mile 11 in Houston. Right. Um, that's definitely a ring ringing of the bell right yeah, there. For sure. Not many people had his type of swagger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like I just that. have no kick too, so it's yeah. like even more <laughs> yeah. amplified. Where yeah, it's like yeah, I yeah, close yeah. in like 62 and be like, yeah. all right, not yeah, bad. Yeah, you like that 62. You like that. And Lopez, guess what? It's coming back again. 1342 the next weekend oxy <laughs> yep i'll kick one second faster than my race pace that's right yeah. that's right um so yeah i don't i don't know there's not i feel like i'm usually the one ringing the bell no yeah, I, I don't like know that. if i'd be I like that, that. Yeah, i like I mean, that the <laughs> bell the road bell, racing is reed just, uh, fisher the bell ringer yep um no road racing i feel like is it's a lot different like tactically a lot of times it is more just like that turning of the screw until you're just like right. ah, i can't go anymore yeah. um rather than somebody just throwing in like a massive move to just like break everybody for sure yeah, but there's been sure. times i'm sure that i just can't think of right now yeah. that i've so just it, blacked out of my memory because it's you know, humbling you know yeah <laughs> it is crazy how when there is a bad experience in races like you can push that down and forget about mm-hmm. it you know and i think that's what like 
any professional athlete across any sport is like, dude, if you throw a pick or you get struck out, like the best guys know how to get right back yeah, up to play and keep memory. on swinging, mm-hmm. you know, no matter sure. what. Because if you carry that into your next race, you know, like get scary quick. Mm-hmm. If you know, um, who's your biggest rival? Like, is it Fobble? You know, like I mean, I guess I, I guess you haven't. Have you beat Fobble straight up in like a half or a marathon? I don't know. We don't race each other very often. Yeah, like, I've raced him more in the last year than I have in probably the rest of my career combined. Mm-hmm. Um. I think I've beaten him a handful of times in some shorter things, yeah. and he's beaten me, obviously, in, in the couple of marathons we've ran. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Is I there mean, someone I, that you're like, every time that you line up, you're like, I I want to beat him. I want to be sure I got his number today. Um, Because I'm sure there's people out there that want to kick your ass every time. Yeah, right? I mean, you, you would know? think. Like, you would um, think Frank Lara, Boulder, yeah. bragging rights, yeah. you know? I mean, yeah, like, that's probably su- like... Boulder Road Supremacy. Yeah, like, I feel like Frank and Scott are always two guys that I kind of like yeah benchmark myself off of you yeah. know they're here in boulder so you see them training you see their results like i mean that last workout we did together yeah i mean yeah, it was Fobble 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 on the same was, road. Was, it was literally mm-hmm. going back and forth and it's crazy to think that, that was just on some little road in boulder yeah. colorado yeah. it's like a and foreshadowing yeah, yeah totally and you guys actually cool down together what yeah. was that cool down like was yeah it, was, it was good i mean that's the th- like in the running community in general like it's just such a small sport and especially on the roads where a lot of times like you're eating meals with these guys. Like sometimes you're roommates with them if you're not in a marathon setting. So it's Have like, you, you ever had an really... awful roommate situation? Not really. Yeah. Everyone's good. Um, yeah. And that is kind of because you have to just like be a normal dude. Who's yeah. not an asshole. If you're going to like spend time in close proximity with these people. So I feel like it's a lot kind of like maybe like the F1 paddock, right. Where it's like, you know, FP one, everybody's daffing each other up and it's yeah, like, yo exactly. dude, it's good to see yeah, you. Exactly. And then on race day, it's like, yeah, I, I think you're a great guy but i still want to beat you and so i think yeah. that's you know every time i see frank or fobble like we'll get some miles in like i'll yeah. run with those guys a couple times or hop into a cool down when it lines up and things like that and it's always good and then you know there's a little bit of banter about like oh you know how you feeling all that kind of sure. stuff but so there the wasn't anything day, notable like, said in that cool down to share no, with everyone no i mean i was just talking about the race yeah, strategy nothing yeah, asking how the build's going and, yeah. and kind of just like yeah i'm sure we'll see each other out there for a good chunk of it um, for sure and yeah, I mean, obviously internally, you know, we're both like, yeah, I'll see you Chomping out there until I, put, until I don't, until <laughs> yeah. I don't see you, until I drop you. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's, or it's, he drops you in the past situation. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think it's, you're always, you have a healthy, you know, everybody's doing the same thing. It's like, you can't not respect these guys, but mm. at the same time, like you want to beat them every time you go out. And so there's that weird sort of dynamic of like yeah i really do think scott's a great guy and like i always wish him the best when i'm not competing but when sure. we're in the same race it's like yeah i'm gonna do everything i can to beat him and yeah. he would say the same thing about me so it's yeah it, it's makes a it, cut, fun, it is a cutthroat sport this is such a cutthroat sport and you know the higher you get you know the more intense it gets and you get mm-hmm. the more intense characters and the passion that people have you know um just gets dialed up more and more and more you know from high school to college to professional you know now to top 10 world major finishes um i want to finish this um there's a picture that i know you have framed you know from those first formative years of tim and elite Mm -hmm. at the 10k on the track you know where it's basically the whole team you know christine is even there in the background um before (laughs) you know we were yeah we had you guys at that point yeah Yeah, no Mm -hmm. it's a really special picture um and I know there was so much emotion that went into that. Yep. Um, and for us, you know, that was a huge turning point moment. We're like, we're doing it. Mm-hmm. We're for real. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. And they just got it done today. Yeah. Um, talk to me about some other really emotional moments that you had, whether it was in New York with someone um, or was there a moment in any of these past marathons that you ran? Like, did you ever get a shout out? Did you ever get a lump in your throat in the race or mm-hmm. after the race that you experienced? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just really cool to see, like, the growth we've had since then, uh, like, as people, but also as a team. Like, I think when that race, like, I was fourth at U.S. Championships, and nobody, you know, we had a very niche following of, like, diehard fans at that point, but we right. were not a household name. Like, I ran that race in a Tracksmith kit because Adidas yeah, right. wasn't in the picture That's yet. Right. Like, <laughs> I think we Tracksmith still... had that in their yeah, stores. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, yeah, and Matt Taylor, I think, had it on his desk That's at one right. point. Yeah. Um, so, shouts, but yeah, I think you know as a brand as a team as individuals we've all grown so much from that moment i think that's where it's a lot of fun to just like every once in a while it will hit you when you know you're in the new york marathon and you hear somebody like shout your name and then 10 steps later somebody and it's just like how did i go from being this 
dude who is scraggy pretty irrelevant. Little, yeah. Um, we'll play some what's scraggy this guy. little 10k runner. Yep, there yep. he is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think that's that's you know the, the time when it hits me a bit more, and then I think I've also become. A lot like the things that hit me harder, like emotionally now, are more like the less of like the our successes as a team or like my successes in an individual, and more like the seeing the impact um, that that either we have as a, a team or just the impact that like running has on people, and that's like something that I'm always very acutely reminded of in in a marathon setting. Is like you know we did the Q and A panel beforehand, and a couple of the people who are there are like, oh, I've been following like your entire career like it's i've been crazy. following all these it's youtube crazy. videos yeah. like man like in this build you've gotten me out the door for my workouts like multiple times i was not feeling like i could go do That's it special, and then man. i woke That's up special. and watched your your video and and shouts to max for for getting that stuff done where it's like he puts it on display for people so that you can see like what it is like for us and i think a lot of people just assume that running professionally is just this, like not glamorous right like we're not in the nba but it's like everything's effortless because you can run well and fast. Yeah. Yeah, but, it's crazy but, how yeah. far those messages go, right? Mm-hmm. Or yeah, those 100%. little moments, you know, like I know that on the fridge upstairs, you know, we have tons of emails and things, you know, mm-hmm. that we printed out and yep. have kept, you know, and if we ever, there is a direct message that comes through the Tin Man account or wherever, we screenshot it, we send it yep. to the team, we put it in the group chat mm-hmm. and we're like, hey guys, don't forget the bigger picture here. Yep, you know, definitely. like we all might have those dreams of putting on the US singlet, you know, but at the end of the day, like, Tim Man Elite was built to push the sport of running forward. And if we can do things, like you said, get someone out the door, keep them going in those tough moments, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's the beauty. And I, and I, and I hope that that will be our lasting legacy, like past when when we're long and gone and Mm -hmm. coaching or doing whatever little (laughs) things we can do to stay in the sport. But yeah, Reed, thank you so much for the time. This is Tin Talk episode one. Like I said at the start of this podcast, this is a free source for anyone on the team to ever jump on and talk with someone. If you guys have any questions for us or if there's someone that you want to hear from or if there's someone on the team that you think should be interviewing someone, let us know. Hit the comments. Give us some reviews. Let's get this going. Really appreciate you. And Reed, thank you for your time. Yeah, for sure. Episode two, me interviewing Goose after his half marathon. Let's go. You heard it here first. Mark it. Thank you.